What's up everybody, Lucky Lefty here, coming to you guys with a pros and cons post-game review for Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, I said I was going to do this when I finished playing the game, and I finished playing it uh, within, I think it said 4 days and 23 hours. So it probably took me about 6 regular days to finish it, but I, but I was doing like 18 hour shifts of playing the game because it is a very, very big game. So as I'm sure, you know, 17 million people bought it, so I'm sure a lot of you guys are playing it or you're about to play it for Christmas. Probably another 17 million, if not another 100 million Christmas gifts. And it is definitely worth it. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 is full of great new features. Uh, another top-notch game from Rockstar Games. So um, as for right now, I'm like I said in my previous videos, my GTA 5 videos, I'm very, very new to Xbox. I'm very new to the gaming world, but I started with Rockstar, and at this point, um, Rockstar is my favorite. So, and I hear from my other gamer friends that Rockstar is really probably at the top end of games, and it seems to be my style of game. So, good, great job to Rockstar Games for another good game. Um, and that, and that's just the story. That's just the single player mode. The online hasn't even come out yet. From what I hear, it's going to be coming out around November 26th through the 28th, towards the end of the month, maybe after Thanksgiving. Or, um, yeah, probably after Thanksgiving. Um, so, let's get into this review. So, I'm going to start with the pros. I'm not going to put any spoilers in this video. I'm not going to tell you guys, for those of you who haven't uh, played the game or haven't finished the game, I'm not going to, I'm going to try to dodge all spoilers. But um, if I do, sorry if I put it in there. Um, so, the pros. So everybody has been saying the same thing. Detail graphics, uh, the graphics and the scenery, um, the landscape and just in general was very, very good. I think that's the best feature in the game is how realistic they've made. They've made these sceneries like it literally looks like you're in these places. I mean, outside of the weather, like actually feeling the temperature, you really find yourself immersed into the landscape of the game like. The game is worth buying just to see this visually. It's like a moving piece of art. Like it's a growing, evolving piece of art. It's really, really artistically, um, like beautiful. I I haven't seen anything really like it. Just on the landscaping alone. I'm not saying like the characters, because I think the characters they did well on that. But it still looks like a, you know, it still looks like a game. But the detail that went into the landscaping was phenomenal so it's definitely beautiful even if you just travel through the map on Red Dead 2 and just look at the different sceneries from different locations from the swamps to the mountains and the snow to the place of roads it looks like Georgia um, that, that's a great part of the game it's my favorite feature of the game actually it makes you want to explore it more because you just want to see how immersive you can get into this landscape so that's a pro Okay, my other pros. So, the interactions with uh, the little white blips that come up in the game where you can just randomly interact with uh, a random uh, NPC. That's, I love the interactions part because the interactions choose, like, they could be positive or negative. You don't know until you get into the conversation or the interaction with this person. If they're going to be negative, if they're going to start a gunfight with you, or if they're going to do something that you know you make a decision and it puts you at risk but I think it keeps the game balanced because it, it keeps you questioning like oh I don't know what this person is coming at and it makes you actually self check yourself like if I was in this situation what would I do uh, for those of us who are playing our characters as if it was ourselves um, I think the little interactions are positive or, or negative are a really good feature and I like the fact that they I'm playing post game, so I've already finished the game, and I, th I was surprised that even after the end of the story, I was still finding blips. I was still finding people to talk to. Like this still goes on after the story is over. Um, after you've 100% completed the story, you're still going to have interactive conversations. And I've also completed the side missions, so I've completed the side missions and the um, story, and I'm still getting new interactions that I haven't seen. It's not a lot of them, but if I'm in a town for a certain period of time, I'm going to get an interaction somewhere. So that's cool. Um, the missions, the side missions, the side stranger missions, those are really, really good too. The side stranger missions are like, they're very advanced and detailed. I think the only thing that I didn't like about it was that 
that you couldn't like you could receive medals like silver gold or bronze um, for how you completed those things but they don't tell you until after the fact what you had to do to get those medals didn't really like that that feature because I don't know you know most of those features were based on timing and if you're like me you're trying to listen to the story figure out what's going on and I'm kind of like slow motioning before I get into something because I want to check out surroundings make sure I'm not getting eaten by a bear or alligator I'm kind of just slow moving so a lot of those missions I got bronze on because, and that was just solely based on um, how much time it took me but I mean that's cool too I mean even if you you spend more time into the story I was really really into the story because Red Dead 1 really captivated me I went and played it maybe three or four months ago I bought it and played it three or four months ago as to prepare me for Red Dead 2 because I'd never played Red Dead 1 and I love the story for Red Dead 1 so I was really excited about Red Dead 2. As you can see in this video, I've <laughs> currently I stumbled across a stranger. I heard a sound, uh, and it was a naked man running through. He's the wolf man or something. He almost whooped my ass, though. Um, but back to the pros and cons. So, I definitely like stranger missions. Hidden houses, mask, map, and money. There are so many things that are hidden. Hidden secrets. Unique, uh, like mask and hats and items just in general like letters things that tell you about the story in it like you can go by any house and maybe stumble across a letter and it's actually more detail about like people that you ran into during the story so you get more information about why things were happening the way they were so they do give you a lot of pamphlets and paperwork and newspapers you'll find your satchel full of paperwork and you're like, okay, I don't, I'm trying to play the game, I'm not trying to read all this. But if you get the chance, read some of these things. They're actually really essential to what you're doing in the game. It's going to make you a better uh, player at this game. And it's crazy because it's the same thing like in real life. If you want to hide something, put it in a book. Nobody wants to read it. But I started going through some of these things and reading them. It took me a minute to start reading. I, I didn't really start taking the time to read it until my post-game play when I'm like trying to find stuff, what I'm supposed to be doing. And I realized if I would have read some of this stuff earlier, I would have known what I was doing when I first got in. So definitely take the time to read the things that you pick up um, because they're going to work in your favor if you actually read it um, in the, in the uh, story, before you get through the story. Um, the post-game play. Uh, and achievements i I love it because there's still the map was so interactive, so the first thing I did when I finished the game was I wanted to see if there was any further I could go on the map because I seen all these blurry parts, and I was like, I want to see how far I can go well, and I didn't look at any YouTube videos I didn't want anybody to ruin the game for me until I wanted to go watch videos about maybe something I couldn't find or what was next but i I played the whole game without. Um, watching any YouTube videos and then I went and looked at YouTube videos but um, my pro on that is that um, you there's still so much to do and still so much to find so even if you did all the stranger missions you completed the story there's so many things to find and um, within the game so the post game play I play the game still every day and I beat it I beat it within four or five days so or maybe six days and I'm still playing the game every day for hours finding new stuff um, things and tips and tricks and things that I could uh, show you guys, but it's still a really, really good. I find myself still excited about the game, even in the post game play. And you get a lot of achievements if you check. If you're achievement hunter, there's a lot of achievements in this game, and I find myself like randomly, I'm getting diamond achievements because I'm completing things really fast. Um, of course, because I completed the game, and a lot of people haven't completed it. Um, so a lot of achievements um, unlocked. So if you're an achievement hunter this is a really good game for you um the game just doesn't seem to end and hopefully that uh, signifies a single player dlc updates maybe they update the single player version i would love that i mean just in case online gets a little too crazy maybe you know if they update the story i would love to be able to play single player this is what i like a single player game to feel like i don't have to like interact with other people but i'm still interacting with the game so if rockstar can do single player updates to this story all pros all pros the game is great um, in the next section of this video I'm gonna give you guys the cons of what, what I saw in the game that I didn't like so um, give me one second and I'll be right back the good the bad the ugly
All right, you guys, I'm back now for the cons. All right, so the cons. I'm just going to name the chapters. All right, so the story of Red Dead 1, I found to be flawless. I thought it was great. Um, I didn't find anything that I didn't like in the story of Red Dead 1. Even Mexico was great. All right, so chapter 1 of Red Dead, the opening, the little intro tutorial thing. I hated it. It was so much stuff popping up on the screens. Well, what you needed to do or what things were going to be used for. Um, that you couldn't really pay attention to the story. Read the buttons at the bottom. How you need to use the buttons. Because there's a lot of different button play in this game. Um, and then also like get it down. So I like when I first started the game I was kind of irritated. Like. I can't even, I'm like, I feel like I missed something. I don't know what's going on. I'm trying to read with, with everything that's going on here. Like, why are we in the snow? Um, it looked nice. It really looked nice, but I couldn't, like, I don't know. If chapter one was, and it was long. It was, like, drawn out. I wanted to be able to reference something, but it really would, would make me mad about chapter one. It was so much stuff popping up on the left-hand side that you need to know about, like your honor, your skills, and all this other stuff that I felt like shouldn't have been there during the tutorial. How am I supposed to read both things at the same time? I'm trying to figure out the buttons and read all these notes you guys are giving me for the game, and I can't. So, and I, what I first thing I did was... Okay, let me pause it and go to the index. Like, let's see if this index is stuff that I'll be able to find later. So I pause the game. And my other con, this is on actually on the con, de con, the index. The index is like a brief version um, of each little thing. So if you hit the start button on the game, though, you'll see an index. But it's not really an index. It doesn't index exactly what they said in the top left corner. So it's just really giving you like little tidbits about stuff and you can get some information in there but I want to know exactly what you said that I missed because I found myself actually recording screen captures so I could go back and read what was uh, up on the top left corner. So I was making 30 second clips just trying to come figure out what I missed because I figured I'm not going to find it in the index. So the index is not really an index. It's a help guide. It should probably say guide instead of index because an index should refer back, the ex refer back to the exact words that they wrote up on the top left. So I didn't like that. Um, so that was chapter one. So just get through it. Maybe go back and play it after the fact. Like I, I'm, I'm working on the game again. I'm, I'm going through the story again. And now that I know the buttons and I know what I'm supposed to be looking for and all that other stuff. But chapter one didn't like. But you'll get through it. Get through chapter one. Chapter two was great. So then I didn't like chapter four and a half. Didn't four and a half, like four, somewhere halfway through four. Didn't really like the story. Um, I'm sure that was like a turning point, but it was just you didn't really have control of it. Where a lot of it where you were making choices in the in chapters two and three that you know you felt like you had connections. Chapter four, somewhere in the halfway point, you kind of lose control and the game is making choices for you. I guess my friend says so they could start to bring an end to the story. But at the end of the day, like if you're gonna make a thing versus honors and honor and um, dishonor. You gotta let me have a little bit more freedom in my choices in the story. It's kind of like, you know, what was that books that used to come out? Like, I can't, maybe it was Goosebumps where you could, if you chose this answer, you go to this chapter or you would get this or this would happen. I thought that that was how that was gonna work. Uh, the honor system, okay, that was actually my other. <laughs> now, I have a list of the cons. Th these are the things that work together. So, I didn't like the honor system either. It's not that I didn't like the honor system. I didn't like the fact that it was very easy to lose honor and very hard to get it. Like, you can get honor, but you can't keep it. Like, you can't keep it if you want to do anything fun in the game. All the fun stuff, <laughs> um, all the cool stuff and the fun stuff requires you to be dishonorable. And maybe you're not a dishonorable player, but there's no way for you to really get your honor back up quickly. Um, I've looked at some glitches and some, and most of the time when people are finding honor, like on the positive honor, um, they're doing glitches and stuff like that. So you don't want to have to glitch just to get honor school, honor points back up. And then honor reflects on your clothing and what you can buy in the stores and stuff like that. So they made it really hard to get positive honor. Um, auto save. The auto save was terrible. So make sure you're saving the game. 
The autosave only works when you sleep or when you go to your camp and sleep. That's the autosave. So make sure if you're playing the game, you say you did it for like 45 minutes, save the game. I probably save it every 10 minutes. I save the game every time. Like, say I, I get something like a legendary animal. I immediately stop and save the game. Because on the way back of putting this legendary down or something like that, anything could happen on your road trip, on your trip, and that'll be the end of your legendary animal. So um, if you save, you can reload from where you were at. So make sure that you are saving because the auto save is like a little, it's a, it's a rough system. So either sleep or manually go in there and go to uh, story and save the game. The other thing is, this is a spoiler, but I'm not going to say it. So if you've played it, you're going to know what I'm talking about. There should have been a cure in this game for this thing that happens in the game. So that's all I'm going to say. There should have been a place where you could... They have so much hidden stuff in the game and there's so many herbs and th remedies and things you can craft and create. I didn't understand why that wasn't an option, like, to be able to craft or create something there and it changed the storyline or, you know, add to the storyline or at least give you the effort to try to offset the um, the thing you're going to need a cure for. So, <laughs> I'm trying not to spoil. Sorry if I did. Um, but, yeah, those were my cons. Chapters, oh, in Chapter 5. Chapter 5, Yeah. I didn't like it at all. It, I, I liked the view of it. Didn't have enough time to actually enjoy it. So yeah, I don't know about chapter 5. Like, you'll notice when you get there, just when you get to chapter 5, if you're new to playing, when you get to chapter 5, the tip I'll give you is take your time, enjoy the landscape, have a good time with it, because it's here today and gone tomorrow. <laughs> Literally like that. So uh, yeah, those are my pros and cons. My pros and cons list. The cons, I, you know, those are things they could have worked on in the story. That's me. me. I personally like Red Dead 1 story better. I like Red Dead 2's game better. They could have mixed the story with the writers who wrote the story on 1, with the people who created the game, um, the designers on this one. I think we could have done, you know, uh, you know, even excellent. But the game is great, but it could have been excellent. It could have been excellent. Um, but I'm not I'm not too upset about it. I'm a Rockstar fan, so, you know, I'm happy. You know, I'm happy overall. The pros, it was definitely worth the money, the $60. If you paid up to $100, and I saw all the cool stuff that you get when you paid $100, I don't have nowhere to put all that stuff. But I'm sure it was worth It's definitely worth it. So, you know, if you're looking at this review and you're trying, oh, for parents who may be looking at this review, this is a good game to give to your kids for Christmas or for a holiday or whenever you see this video. This is a good game. I do have a kid, um, so we don't let him um, play GTA 5 uh, because how crazy it is. But if you are a parent and you want to let your kid play a game for Rockstar, Red, Red Dead is a good game. It is very limited on any like rated X or R-rated content. You might get a little cursing here and there. Probably more of a bad attitude, but it's kind of more of a defensive thing. It's not all the way bad. So I let my kid play this game because it's so much stuff to do, so much stuff for him to see, and things like that. They're actually realistic. They're very historical. So you're learning while you're playing it about this whole different period of time that they probably not learned about in school. So this is definitely a kid-friendly game to all the moms. Um, I'm a mom, so I know what you're looking for. This is the only game. Um, even I might let him play Fortnite every, but he has like hour doses of like Fortnite. Um, but I'll let him play this. We'll play this together um, because there's so much, so many different things, and it gives him an opportunity to keep reading. He's seven years old or eight years old, and um, it gives him a good time because in order to play this, you need to know how to read. And so this gives me good learning, um, good reading time. To hey, you need to know how to do this. If you really want to play, you gotta take the time to actually read this. So it gives me a balance of actually being able to teach as well as play. So it is a good game for parents. So if you want to, if your kid has it on his Christmas list, it doesn't have it already. You're definitely a good investment in the game. You should play it with them because there is a lot of reading and to understand how to play. Um, but 
you know, overall, it's a really, really good game. And Rockstar gets two thumbs up from me. You know, definitely worth it. And I'm ready for the online. So you guys let me know. You guys have been playing. Um, let me know what you thought of or what you think of the game so far. And are you excited about the online? I can't think. I haven't seen too many people. I may have seen one or two that didn't like this game. But out of 17 million um, people... I know the view is better than the elections. <laughs> I'm sure it's a good 80% of the people that bought this game, or probably 90% love this game. I've, all I hear is it's the best game ever, ever created. So they've, Rockstar has managed to set the bar even higher from GTA 5. I haven't even gotten on GTA 5 since Red Dead 2 came out. Sorry you guys who watch me because of my GTA 5 glitch videos. I'm just over glitching and I'm ready to get into Red Dead 2 and I've been kind of waiting for it. But GTA 5 is like my first baby. I do love GTA 5, but I'm in love with Red Dead 2. So, um, definitely like, subscribe, comment, tell a friend to tell a friend. Definitely comment. I respond to comments. So, um, definitely comment. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't like. Um, and this is my post-game review. Lucky Lefty, L-U-C-K-I-I-L-E-F-T-Y. Um, I'm lucky lefty on everything, uh, all social media, Facebook, uh, Instagram. Also, you can go to my website, luckylefty.com. Don't lucky with two eyes. And then my gamer tag is lucky lefty space instead of a dot. So space com. Um, on Xbox, I'm an Xbox gamer, and I will catch you guys next time.